ladies, ambies, and gents. It seems a few people, notably Noel Plum, Hayes, and Teal Deer, have taken issue with my claim that the notion that the Western world is under threat from cultural Marxism is Nazi propaganda. I want to address this comment from Teal Deer first, because as well as making a number of very hypocritical attacks on my character, it also makes some factually incorrect claims about the UK education system. Now, Teal Deer claims a BTEC is the equivalent of one A level. This is incorrect. A BTEC at level three, which is the level I studied it at, is with two A levels. I also have grade eight on the guitar, which is considered equivalent to an A level. So, no, my admission to university was not the result of this alleged lowering of entry requirements. Bizarrely, Teal Deer claims I have never studied in academia, but also acknowledges I have a degree in journalism. Specifically, I have a combined degree in commercial music production and journalism. This is largely, I think, projection on his part, given as he's never been forthcoming with his academic qualifications, and even tried to convince me once that he's a professor. I'm really not sure who the fuck Teal Deer actually thinks he is, because to me he's just another kid with a YouTube channel hiding behind an avatar who's managed to convince a bunch of gullible people to give him their money. At least until I'm given reason to believe otherwise. Teal Deer makes the assertion that I live under some delusion that any semi-official looking source is in some way an academic source that instantly means I'm correct even when it isn't an academic source and is still wrong anyway. This is the person who once said this. Why don't we ask Lacey Green to provide an academic peer-reviewed paper that proves that it actually does exist? Or better yet, why don't you provide an academic peer-reviewed paper that proves that the pay gap does exist? I, on the other hand, in the box beneath this video, will link to several articles proving that it doesn't exist. And will also include a link to the feminist academic author, Christina Hoff Summers who also says that it doesn't exist. So I will be providing several sources showing you that it doesn't exist, while in the context of this video, Lacey Green and yourself will merely be asserting that it does. So as we can see, this is hardcore projection. Here, Teal Deer has done exactly what he's accusing me of, mistaking a semi-official looking source for an academic source and failing to realize it doesn't actually agree with his position. Now, Christina Hoff Summers is an academic, and she is an author. However, the article to which he links, which he says proves his claim, isn't an academic piece. It's an opinion piece. So to call her an academic author in this instance is misleading, because while it is authored by an academic, it isn't itself academic. Teal Deer also accuses me of being easily impressed by big words and things that sound complicated and that I desperately want the kudos and accolades associated with things while having barely any knowledge of the fields I talk about and that I mouth the words and talk down to everyone and cite whatever bogus source I feel like and then double think my way into convincing myself I'm some manner of academic. Again, this is hardcore projection. This is basically a perfect description of Teal Deer's channel. But moving on, an issue has been raised with my choice of citation, which comes from the Society for U.S. Intellectual History, which Noel Plum, Hayes, Tildeer et al. dismiss as being just a blog. Noel Plum also accuses it of having a left-wing bias and draws a comparison with my complaint of right-wing channels, citing right-wing think tanks such as the Heritage Foundation, the American Enterprise Institute, and Prager University, such as I mentioned with reference to Tildeer. To address the comparison, the American Enterprise Institute is an openly right-wing think tank with a documented history of corruption. Notably, they offered $10,000 each to scientists and economists as a bribe to undermine a major climate change report from the IPCC. They also sacked one of their writers, David Frum, for criticising the Republican Party's refusal to cooperate with the Democrats with regard to the Affordable Care Act. They were also founded by a group of businessmen with an openly capitalist agenda. By contrast, the Society for U.S. Intellectual History was founded by a group of historians whose agenda was to write about, host conferences on, and ratify the field of intellectual history. To the best of my knowledge, there are no scandals surrounding the Society, no incidences of them trying to bribe anyone in order to get them to lie about anything, and no incidences of people being fired for not towing a certain political line. This is an important point some of my critics seem to miss about my objection to right-wing think tanks like the American Enterprise Institute. It's not just that they are right-wing that is the issue, it's that they have a history of unethical behaviour that is very much related to their political loyalties. While both the AEI and the SUSIH claim to be non-partisan, in the case of the former they clearly aren't, as evidenced by their attempt to put capitalistic interests ahead of the environment, their firing of someone for criticising the GOP's stance on healthcare. 
As for the latter, you're going to have to do a bit more to convince me that they are partisan than the fact that they don't like right-wing terrorism and that they don't think there's a Jewish Marxist conspiracy trying to take over the world. I know in the weird and not-so-wonderful world of YouTube, such beliefs are considered to be crazy, hard-left, SJW snowflake beliefs, but if we step outside of that and back into the regular world, such beliefs are pretty much the norm for the right, the left, and the centre. I do find these false equivocations rather tiresome. But that said, the source has been rejected by Noel Plum and others, so I'm going to put a bit more work in and walk us through the complexities of this bizarre conspiracy theory that is cultural Marxism and explain its connections to Nazism. I should explain that some of my citations will be academic, some won't. The ones that won't be are where I am simply providing evidence that the people who I assert believe and say certain things do indeed believe and say said things. And some will simply be news articles documenting the various events discussed here. So obviously I am under no delusion that Rightpedia or Stormfront are academic sources. What I wish to do here is take us on something of a reverse timeline of cultural Marxism as used by the right wing, starting with Anders Breivik and other modern users of the term and moving backwards from there. So, Anders Breivik is a right wing terrorist who killed 77 people on the 22nd of July 2011. He had authored a manifesto entitled 2083, a European Declaration of Independence, in which he detailed his opposition to what he referred to as cultural Marxism, namely multiculturalism, political correctness, social justice, and feminism. So where was Anders Breivik getting this from? Well, in his manifesto, he cites the Free Congress Foundation as a source on cultural Marxism. Now, the Free Congress Foundation is a conservative think tank which recently rebranded itself as American Opportunity, run by Paul Weyrich, also founder of right-wing think tank the Heritage Foundation. So where do the Free Congress Foundation get their information about cultural Marxism from? Well, it comes from William Lind, who contributed a comprehensive essay and a book on the subject to the FCF's website. So who is Bill Lind? Is he just your average run-of-the-mill conservative? No, he is someone who once gave a talk on cultural Marxism at a Holocaust denialist convention. He's also the author of a Washington Post piece entitled Futuristic Fantasy, which positively depicts the division of America into racial mini-states, a white nationalist anti-Semitic belief known as kinism. So who else is getting their ideas from Bill Lind? Well, there's Holocaust denialist and, quite alarmingly, former presidential candidate Pat Buchanan, uh, Lynn's theory of cultural Marxism is also a popular topic of discussion on neo-Nazi website Stormfront and with the cluster of websites that make up the alt-right, such as Breitbart, the National Policy Institute, Radix, etc., etc. But that's the present day. How far back does this concept of cultural Marxism extend? Noel Plum seems to doubt that cultural Marxism has anything to do with Nazi Germany. I think part of the problem here might be that cultural Marxism is also sometimes referred to as cultural Bolshevism. Indeed, we see the phrase culture Bolshevismus throughout the Nazi press. As Jay explains, Patrick Buchanan's 2001 best-selling screed against the nefarious impact of immigration, the death of the West, was one major source stigmatising as it did the Frankfurt School for promoting cultural Marxism, a recycling of the old Weimar conservative charge of cultural Bolshevism aimed at aesthetic modernists. Now, I'm not entirely sure what Noel Plum's issue is here, if it's just he didn't like my choice of source, which hopefully I've rectified here, or if he just objects to me tarring and feathering people he likes with the word Nazi. If the latter, I'd say... I did say in my last video that I don't necessarily think everyone who throws the word cultural Marxism around is actually a Nazi, but knowingly or not, they are spouting Nazi propaganda, and as such, I stand by my original claim. This unwitting perpetuation of Nazi propaganda is in some ways much more worrying than the conscious perpetuation of such propaganda because it shows that these people are just lapping up whatever online right-wing communities feed to them without doing any research into what they're actually being told. This is sadly what it means to be a skeptic on YouTube. Case in point, this is a genuine comment I received the other day. I'd add, it would be nice if people like Noel Plum can get as angry as they evidently do at the notion of people they like being accused of spouting Nazi propaganda, that they might occasionally show similar anger at, well, you know, the Nazi propaganda itself. Just a thought. 
I should add here that cultural Marxism isn't the only evidence I provided as to members of this community spouting Nazi propaganda. I also provided evidence of Blair White saying refugees should be gassed, which hasn't been acknowledged by Noel Plum. There is another bit of evidence that I didn't mention, and that is Sargon of Akkad, aka Karl of Swindon, and his belief in crani craniometry, a long-debunked piece of racist pseudoscience that asserts the inferiority of certain races based upon skull size that formed an integral part of the Nazi's policy on race. Hey, did you all know that you can apparently tell someone with Negroid, Mongoloid, or Caucasoid, Caucasianoid, uh, by the structure and shape of their skulls? Yeah, that's true. No, no, that's literally true. This whole palaver very much underlines why I have no interest in having live stream debates about these sorts of subjects. This is a drama that started a month and a half ago. If in the space of a month and a half we're making as little progress as we have, I fail to see how we would somehow have made leaps and bounds in a two hour live stream. Regarding free speech and capitalism, which an old plum also mentioned in his video, I'll be addressing that in a future video, seeing as it's something I've been planning to make a video about anyway. Before I go, if you're one of those people who thinks I live in an echo chamber and never expose myself to things I disagree with, I can honestly say that in researching this video I have never read so much right-wing shit in my life. Goodbye. <laughs>